Welcome to another one of our Parish of the Resurrection midweek encouragements. I hope you've been encouraged over the past week. I hope you remember Helen last week talking about getting your vaccination and the work that she does in public health. And today we've got Martin, Martin Edwards. It's really, really a real pleasure to have you with us, Martin. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for agreeing to encourage the parish today. Now, you know, Martin, that the first question we always ask is of mm. critical detail is how do you like your cup of tea? Um, well, the clear, the well, the straightforward answer is I don't. I actually oh. quite strongly detest the stuff. <laughs> um, I'm an utter coffee man. Nothing posh. I don't mind. Don't worry about specialised takeaway coffees or what have you. Just the glass jar with the red lid, a bit of that with a bit of milk, uh, and I'm quite happy. Thank you. But it's quite late in the evening now, so it's just onto the water now. Otherwise, I would never get to sleep tonight. But um, no, so sorry, I'm not very British there, am I? No um, tea, but good instant coffee. Absolutely, just good absolutely. instant coffee. Gordon. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. I think that's the first person we've had on Midweek Encouragement who doesn't actually drink tea at all. So you're, you're, you're first there, Marcy, so that's good. Okay. I'll take that as a positive rather than a letdown. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, just give us a little bit of a flavour for how you came to be in Alton uh, then Martin That's sure um, I'm, um, I'm a Londoner by birth and I spent most of my life there although when people ask me where I grew up I say over in the Milan Valley which is probably about 15-20 miles away so even as a youngster Alton was sort of on my peripheral of my radar and um, my mother when the sports center was new and shiny used to bring myself and my two brothers over to swim in the new and shiny pool so imagine my chagrin to find out i'm that old that it's too uh, dilapidated to stay on and has now been demolished um have you but, been to the new sports center i haven't yet actually no Wait. no it's a bit of a one day you can go there again yeah one day <laughs> yeah let's just see um so how do we come to alton so after i um started to get a job and have a career. I was in London um, after a number of years living around the world with my work and um, Lena and I went, got married and then we had a lovely little house very happy in St Margaret's and uh, invested a lot of time and effort on it and then one day we found out that we were going to have a family and then we found out within a couple of weeks after that it was going to be quite a big family so um, it was very clear uh, our little house which we loved was going to be too small and we had to move and so we decided to move uh, to be um, more or less in sort of the area where I grew up um, and also convenient for my work uh, in terms of partway between the two locations where I, I tend to spend my work hours. Right. Just, just a couple of things. You've got a, you've got a family yeah. So I've heard about Lena. There must be some others then that fill this. There are. There's three. There's three. So, yes, Lena, my wife, who uh, is Singaporean. Um, and we have uh, triplets, uh, seven and a half. Um, I don't like calling them the triplets because it makes them seem a bit like a circus act. Um, but they are three children who happen to be born on the same day. Gosh. We have our beautiful daughter, Evangeline, and we have uh, twin boys, Arthur and Hendrik. Um, and they are the best thing that ever happened to us, and they are the most frustrating thing that ever happened to us, and everyone who's a parent, I think, will understand it's all the good and it's all the horrid and everything else rolled together, but ultimately uh, they make us whole, and we wouldn't be without them. And they're a joy. They, they are they a joy. Are, they are absolutely lovely, Martin. When you did the time. prayers as a family at Christmas, <laughs> it was just a, it was a lovely picture, I have to say. They're, yeah, they're, you know, they're lovely, we, lovely. Lovely. We can't complain. Sometimes we try, but we can't really complain. <laughs> but having triplets, that's quite... That's, yes. That's, well, yeah. zero to three, it, it, was, a, it was a huge shock. Yeah. Um, but anyone who has a child, whether you go from zero to three or zero to one, it's life-changing. It completely turns everything you know on its head. We just have it in triplicate. So there's been a few production lines with the baby feeding and the nappy changing and all the other bits and pieces. And they're a bit older now, a bit more independent. Um, so... The challenges don't go away, though. They just change. Yeah. Um, and so how long have you been in Alton and all together? About seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. Now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we moved here. Yes, the kids are eight in May. Um, we moved here when they were six months old. We came in November 2013. It was the wettest winter I can remember. So we christened the town Alton in the rain. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't very easy at first because um, we did have three babies and that was our life and the focus and I work out of town. Lena at the time didn't drive. So it was kind of hard to get integrated and find our way around and how things work and to meet people. 
Um, so yes, it wasn't necessarily the easiest of journeys. Um, partly as well because we were so happy in London and integrated into our community and our church in London. Um, it was quite a shift, but a shift we needed to make. Um, but over time, things have changed with the children. They go to school, you meet, meet, meet new people, you have new friends, you have a new network. The road we live on is amazing. Um, it's a great little community uh, and everyone looks out for each other uh, and they've been fantastic. And then of course, as well, as we've uh, got to know POTR and uh, the, the fellowship of the church, then that's been a great help to us as well. And we've made some great friends now through the church. So over time, we've built our way in, Lena now drives and has more mobility. So it's a journey. And uh, I think we were meant to be here, but it's, it didn't feel easy at the start. Brilliant. Thank you, Martin. Just, just give us a little bit more of a flavour, though, just about what, what you do in terms of a, a living as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I've been described as industry fodder. Um, I, I work for BAT and I have for the 23 years. Um, and uh, I am currently the head of supply chain transformation. What does that mean? Well, we're a global company, uh, literally all around the world. And my job is to look at how as a company, we buy the materials, plan our factories, ma manufacture our products, and then how we distribute them by road, rail, air, sea, uh, around the world to, to make sure we do that in the most simple, cost-effective, um, speedy and efficient way possible. That's yeah. a, probably the best summary I can give of the job. Yeah. Um, long hours to do that because it's now uh, 10 to 9 and you're going back to work after you've done this recording. Don't so. tell Lena, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm afraid I am. Um, yes, it's as a global job, I sort of, you follow the sun. So I get yeah. up in the morning and start early with Asia Pacific. Um, and the Far East, and then I work through the European day as the sun comes round, and then I have uh, calls with the, with the United States and Latin America later on. And of course, there's a job to do as well. So it's, it is busy, but my life wouldn't be the same without what I've done. I've had the luxury and, and privilege to have jobs around the world, including Singapore, where Lena was the finance manager and we met. <laughs> so uh, I'm very happy that I've had the career I've had because my life would be very, very different and I'm sure a lot less rich for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in amongst all of that, Martin, you mentioned the fact that when you're in London, you were well known in your community, you felt great in the community and your church community. And uh, so just a little bit of flavour of, you know, in all of this busy family work life, where mm. does faith fit into all of that? Um, it, it is exceptionally important. Um, it doesn't always get the focus or priority that I would like it to. Um, I, I came to be a Christian when I was 29 um, and I, I was in a church in London and Fulham and which is where and it became our church that's Lena's and my church it's where I went where Lena became a Christian we were married there she was baptized and confirmed there our children were baptized there so and we really know the whole community it's not just about those big um, meaningful events but the whole community was like a great big family and Lena and I were both on the PCC both being treasurer involved with the running of the church and it's sort of a uh, um, development and, and maintenance and uh, keeping the, that, that alive um, and so when we needed to move it was a wrench to come away from that because we were really ingrained but it, it has taught me that actually uh, the church is not the building the church is really the people and even for myself as an individual being a, a Christian it's about my relationship with God it's not about a building it's not about a hymn it's not about any one particular thing and you can find that relationship in all sorts of places and in all sorts of uh, different um, churches with different styles and different uh, communities of course it's always great to, to feel you're part of the community because a key thing for me is the fellowship that comes with being with other Christians learning from uh, sermons and talks uh, the worship the singing the engagement and that sort of mutuality and self uh, affirmation and reinforcement with the people you're with that's really important and that's why I found the last year I, I don't mind saying really quite tough because it's been cut away from us all um, and it's been a very different experience so um, I've I've found it hard to consistently uh, tune in but I really appreciate Compline I find that is a really useful way to try and just 
defocus from the day and wind down. I wish it was later. Um, <laughs> eight o'clock is sort of not at the end of my day, but I really value Compline. Um, and it's great to see Church at Four back and now a refreshed version um, every fortnight. Um, because uh, for me, the the youth and the youth generation is really is the, the next wave to come through. Um, is why I agreed to get involved when we were doing physical church with the lighthouse and to support the leadership of that because it's really important. And although the messages are quite simple, um, there's nothing wrong with being reminded yourself as a Christian of the stories and their significance in simple terms, just to reinforce what you think you know um, and to reinforce what God's love means and to teach it really helps you understand it because to teach it, you have to understand it. So um, Church at Four, it's great to see it back every two weeks. Shout out for all the Church at Four guys. Thank you for what you do, it's brilliant. And um, online, uh, it's, it's working out really well, but I can't wait to get back to do it when we're able to uh, get back in the, the St. Lawrence School Hall. And a, and a bit like um, Helen last week, um, you are part of the Futures Group that we set up in the parish. I am. Can you just give a little flavour of why that's important for you at the moment? Um, I think why I agreed to be involved is for some of the reasons I've just talked about in terms of, for me, it's been a really tough experience with uh, the last year um, with my faith and uh, momentum behind that. And uh, things have changed. We all know the world is changing, how we work and where we work has changed. Uh, I'm now 100% in my study. I used to be 50% Southampton, 50% London. We know the high street is changing. We everyone's moving online. We know the world's a very, very different place to what it was and the church is no different. So coming through from this um, uh, very difficult last up to 12 months now, there's, there's going to be elements of continuity which, which are the right to carry on with and they, they should carry on. But there's also new opportunity there's also new risk and there's new challenges which we need to think about and actually work through how we address them and how we can be the strongest fellowship of POTR that we can be and how we can make sure that we are future fit and how we are here to be uh, really resilient into the future to really sell the message that we're here to is to bring the people to Jesus and bring Jesus to the people as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, Gordon, yeah. perhaps yeah, yeah. Uh, there is something else in Martin's life you might just need well, to talk about. One final question. We have had that question that we always have at the start of how do you like your tea? But I always like to bring in one question at the end now. Um, who do you support, Martin? I need to know. Um, I'm originally a South London boy. South London. Um, <laughs> and uh, from the age of four, so not for very many years now, I've supported Crystal Palace um and i could never support another team i went to my first game when i was four years old um it all came about because my elder brother decided he was he was six and was going to support chelsea so being a bit me too i said to my dad i want to support a team so dad said you can support crystal palace because they're the local team and chelsea were playing palace at selhurst which is the home ground for crystal palace and he took us along and we won two nil and i thought this is great well, this is going to be always like this little <laughs> did i know yeah. um yeah. but you stick stick with what you know if nothing else i'm very very loyal and dedicated yeah. so um through the good times and often the not so good times yeah. i'm red and blue through and through Oh, brilliant. Of course, brilliant. Okay. You've been a few ups and downs, but they're not doing too bad now. <laughs> yeah, we're a bit yeah, really. mid, mid table mediocrity yeah. in the Premiership. I'm quite happy with that. Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> I'll cope with that. And of course, your dad is a very wise man. Many of, you, many of us will know uh, Marty's dad, Barry. So, uh, and I Barry, wouldn't say that on film because he'll get he'll he'll go to his head, please. Oh, it's too late uh, now, Andrew. Said... Oh, yeah, it's too late. You said it, <laughs> but yeah, bless him. I have a lot to thank my father for. Oh. Um, few worries now as he gets older as well but bless him you know um uh, my parents have been great and there is a line in the song which i believe your parents did the best job they know how to do and i can never doubt my parents for caring loving me and my brothers and for doing their best brilliant brilliant gordon i think you're going to pray for us yeah thank you martin thank Thanks you for sharing what you've shared let's 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 pray for you and uh, your family heavenly father lord thank you thank you for martin thank you for lena thank you for evie thank you for arthur and thank you for Hendrik. Thank you uh, for them as a family. Thank you, Lord, uh, for all that they mean to us here at POTR. And, and thank you, Lord, for what um, uh, Martin has shared with us this evening. Lord, would you watch over them as a family? Uh, would you bless them and protect them and keep them strong, Lord? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Martin, thank you really very much. It's been a great pleasure. No, not at all. Thank you. It's, it's been really nice to sort of share, particularly around my, my faith and how um, I've, I really appreciate the POTR community and how it's helped us grow as a family and integrate into the Alton community. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.